I want to thank everyone for tuning in to another episode of the Bull Resistance Show with David Wells. My name is David, and today I want to welcome Nancy Soleri. She's a successful entrepreneur. She's a motivational speaker, a corporate speaker. Uh, she's just an awesome public speaker. Um, she's also a life coach, and she has her own TV show, her radio show. Um, she's got her degree in psychology at the University of Oregon, and of course it goes on and on and on. So Nancy, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. Thank you. You know, before we get started, can you just um, tell us just a little bit more about yourself, like where you were born and raised, and actually what you've been spending most of your time on recently? Um, yeah, I was actually, uh, I'm a Northwest girl by, by heart, um, so grew up much of my life in Washington and Oregon, and um, you know, like so many people, we grew up with a dream, and we don't know how that's going to go, and I grew up watching the Oprah Winfrey show, and I really appreciated back in the day what she and Donahue and Sally and all those really great hosts, the topics they covered, and just the fact that an audience could, could come together and show emotion and talk. And so I share that with your audience because just like any one of us who has a dream, we then have to figure out how to connect the dots to make it happen. And for you and for me, we've been really blessed to be hosts of shows. Um, and so there's a lot of of color and stories in the middle there, but um, ultimately uh, in 2008, I opened up my own doors uh, for Living Soul Out, a company I created, you know, just to really help people achieve those dreams and goals. So that's kind of the, the dream and legacy I've been building. You know, my, my daughter um, introduced me to a, um, a singer called uh, Demi Lovato. And one of the reasons that I started following her, of course, she has great talent. Um, me being a, a musician, I appreciate people that have, you know, talent. Talent. It doesn't have to be music either. You know, it could be radio, TV, actors, and just entertainers in general. But she was also in in, in um, training in jujitsu, which is one of my passions that I love to do. And and one of and when I was reading about you, um, you mentioned that you were a life coach. And the first time I'd actually heard. Uh, the word life coach uh, was when uh, Demi Lovato mentioned Mike Bear as her coach. That being said, tell me what an actually a life coach is or does. It's a great question. So a, a true life coach is someone who takes somebody from the present to the future. Right. So when we consider our, our, our life, it's kind of like a pie, right? You would take a whole pie and you would cut it up in slices. Sure. Well, that, that's who, how we all are. So you're going to have a slice that's going to be for your career, a slice for relationships, a slice for your own personal hobbies or endeavors. And that you can have as many slices of that pie as you need, or it could just be four really big pieces if you want, right? right. And a life coach's job like I mentioned earlier, is to help connect those dots. And sometimes to connect the dots, you have to let go of toxic relationships or negative habits that are holding mm -hmm. you back. And then sometimes you have to work on that belief factor, knowing that what you want is possible, that what other people tell you, expectations, p being bullied, um, you know, even our own insecurities, that they're not real. You know, mm -hmm. fear stands for false evidence appearing real. We, we feel the intensity of the emotion, but a lot of times it's in our mind it's not real. So the coach, a good coach, stands by their client, and we take a journey, we take a walk, and we do measurable goals to achieve that dream. Mm. You know, I, I'll, I'll share this with you. I um uh, for the new listeners, of course, I go uh, spend a lot of my time in the public schools uh, fighting against bullying and talk about making right choices. And, and you know, I, I think, um, you know, bullies are individuals pretty much that have low self-esteem that they don't think they can do well at certain things or anything well, and they don't feel like they can add up. And then the the people that actually get bullied, you know, their self-esteem is, is not the greatest anyway. And one of my goals is when I go into uh, a, a talk is to build their self-esteem. And, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll share this with you. I was, um, I was even though I was born in West Virginia, 
Um, I moved to, uh, my dad was transferred to a job in Dallas, Texas when I was like maybe 10, 11 years old. And so I was raised in Dallas and, and, um, but I currently live in West Virginia and the, the excuses that people have, uh, it's amazing how kids have excuses or even adults have excuses why they're not being successful. And, um, you know, it's either their low self-esteem or it's because of where they live or they feel like they don't have any contacts or anything else. And I think that, you know, I think any, I think everybody can benefit from having a life coach, especially myself. Um, and I know that oftentimes we go through a lot of ups and downs where we feel like we're just drowning, where we're, we're panicking when things aren't going right, especially when, when your primary job is what we love to do. Like, you know, you are, what you do is what you do. And then what I do with, with, um, music or with a podcast, when things aren't going well, I start panicking and, and I'm, I'm not, and then I, st- and then I, you know, uh, I make really not decisive decisions. And I just think that with a life coach, I think it's just so important. So that being said, we all can't afford life coaches. So what, what can we do as just ordinary individuals where we can stay focused, um, on our dreams and, and just live to our full potential, I guess what I'm saying. Well, and, and again, I'm glad that you mentioned that because we can't all afford a life coach. You know, we can't all get a therapist. You know, we can't have that. Um, I do, number one, want to invite your audience to, to always feel that they can call in to the Living Full Out show. Sure. Um, and if they want to go to livingfullout.com, click our radio tab, all the details of when the show is on will be there. And the reason why I do want to invite them to that is, is uh, two of our segments of our show is for people to call in. So I get anonymous okay. callers that call in about anything and everything. So um, they could absolutely call in, and that number is 800-333-0001, and just go to livingfullout.com for the times. The second thing I want to offer them is is researching blog articles or even videos on YouTube. So there's the old saying that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, okay? But right. a teacher can be, uh, doesn't have to be someone older than you, doesn't have to be someone wealthier or even more experienced than you. A teacher can absolutely be your peer. It's just somebody who has who has taken a few steps ahead of you that can give you one or two tips that are game changers. You know, a lot of times when we're trying to crack a life code or our heart is broken or we're nervous or scared, it, it, sometimes a lot of times we function from a place of being a little bit desperate. Just, just tell me the answer. Give me one. Give me one piece of advice. And so the thing is, the good news is really online, whether that be blog posts or YouTube videos, there's so much available out there. And then, of course, they're welcome to call into my show. And, of course, you're a, 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 a light for them as well. Right. You know, um, Nancy, I, you know, I have a lot of people that have been actually on the show, and I guess, you know, and they've been through a lot of ups and downs like a lot of us, and met mostly they all have been through bullying. And um, somehow, you know, they tell their story and how they were able to persevere and um, now they're living their life, you know, to the fullest and and, um, they're making an impact on people around them. What caught my attention about you is that, I mean, you're no stranger to adversity. And, um, you know, and I was reading about you. I mean, it was um, starting when you're um, a teenager, I guess dealing mm-hmm. with your parents and then dealing with your sisters with their situation. And then, then, um, at, I think what, 15, 16, uh, you're dealing with problems with your having with your eyesight. Can you go into more detail about all this, about, about your parents and about your sisters and how you actually came through all this? Yeah. You know, there's so many different things to tell, but I'm going to share three that stand okay. out because you know, the, the one, and as I share these three, I want everybody to remember that we all have survivor qualities, okay? So whenever you've hit a bump in the road or that crossroad where you got to go right or you got to go left, and maybe you made the right decision, maybe you made the wrong decision, <laughs> the thing is, is it's that survivor quality, that resilience, that when you hit the next bump in the road, you're going to kind of say to yourself, I've been here before, 
I don't like it. It feels uncomfortable. I'm scared again. I hate being scared. But I feel like I've been here before. And every time we hit that crossroad in life, we get smarter and and stronger, and, and those survivor qualities come out. So going back into my story, so when I grew up and around 9, 10 years old, uh, I, I guess one would look at my family and it looked like the perfect family, mom, dad, and three daughters. But sure. when you opened up the door, there was a lot of uh, domestic violence in the household, a lot of anger, a lot of shouting. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, there was a time I even had to call the cops, you know, because mm. my dad's anger was really out of control. And, you know, I wanted to make things better, but I didn't know how I could make things better. And I didn't want to do the wrong thing, believe it or not, when you're 9 or 10 years old cleaning up broken glass on the floor. You don't know if that's the right thing or the wrong thing or if you're going to get in trouble, even though you're just trying to help. And I take that experience and then I move it, I, I move it forward to when my sister's and I, we were all diagnosed when I was 16 with retinitis pigmentosa, which is a degenerative eye condition. Um, I'm in my early 40s now, and it's changed so much so that I don't see people's faces. Um, it's mm. just really a lot of shadows, light and dark, and maybe in the best lighting possible, I can see some features of someone's face, but it's never the details, just a little bit here, a little bit there. Sure. But it's But it's been interesting because... Blindness is a disability that doesn't stand out. Unless you have a, a white cane or a service dog, you can't see blindness. So there have been times over the years, I remember one time when I was selling real estate, and it was just after I had to give up driving. I, 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 it's a whole other story, but I made the decision that I just didn't know if I could see well enough to drive anymore. So I started taking the buses. And I was a top producing realtor at the time, so I really had to not lose the momentum of keeping up with my clients. So I would take anywhere between two to 12 buses in a day. And of mm. course, I had to dress up. I had to wear a suit and have my briefcase. And you know, I was just doing the best I could with my disability. And I remember one time being on the bus and this lady um, who probably felt that I had all the money in the world because I looked the part, I was just going to a meeting, and she, believe it or not, she turned to me and she was yelling at me for, for being on the bus and why are you on the bus? And it was just an odd experience, but I realized, again, she had no idea who she was talking to, okay? Sure. And then the last thing I'll do is when a push it forward one more time. Uh, when I was in the music industry in my early 20s, I, um, I was recording an album and had a couple of different scenarios where sexual harassment came into play. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time as, as, as there was, I was at our producer's house and people were doing way more drugs than I'd ever seen. And these people were not my people. Yes, they were musicians and artists, and yes, these were people that represented really well-known singers. I went in the bathroom, and at this time I saw a little bit better. I looked at myself in the mirror, and I was like, these are not your people. You know, right. you're a girl right. from Oregon with a dream, but it doesn't mean you have to be with these people to get there. That's right. And I, I happily packed up that dream and went on to my next one. You know what I mean? Wow. So I guess the moral of the story is you have to really use that internal compass inside right. you, that moral compass, and let that be your guide. Wow. You know, I, um, I can, I, after reading all about you, I, I consider you a very successful uh, entrepreneur. And, and, uh, and from, from the time that you started the radio show, the TV show, the, um, the public speaking, has there ever been a time where you're thinking to yourself, okay, this is just not going my way, and and you're thinking, okay, I need to maybe change something, or I just might need to go ahead and do something different. Has there ever been a time like that, or did you just say, or did you just know this is what I'm called to do? This is this is my gift, um, and there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. I'm going to go ahead and persevere. I mean, have you ever been in situations like that since you've actually started full blown as a public speaker? and uh, with your radio show and TV show. A absolutely, absolutely. I almost feel like you've been in the office with me today because that <laughs> happens on a daily basis, and that's just a life thing, right? Mm -hmm. But absolutely, I mean, I, I remember as I was going along in my speaking career, and 
they kept wanting me to speak longer and longer and longer. And I don't, I can't see note cards. I, I can't see my PowerPoint behind me. And, and, and quite frankly, this one group, it was kind of a four hour gig or nothing. And I was like, I guess I'll do the four hour gig, but gosh, wow. how, am I, how am I gonna stay on, t- on track for four hours? I have enough to say, but how would I tempo that? And so you sometimes in life, you have to get creative. I got creative. I went to a craft store in my local area called Michael's. I got these, these cardboard little divider things. I had about 10 of them. And then I went down the aisles with one of their customer service reps, and I, I explained to her kind of my story, and we found little, little trinkets. So if I was telling a story about being in Paris, we found a little Eiffel Tower ornament. Or if I was telling a story about, you know, trusting my faith, we found a little teeny cross. So as I was doing that presentation, I didn't have to be worried about, am I going to, you know, you know, do I need to state a script? There was no script. What I did is I just knew how long each of my stories took. I had 35 little uh, mementos. And at the end, when I got done, I turned to my assistant and I said, did I go over? And she goes, you're two minutes before the four hours. Two minutes. And uh, so that was actually impressive. And I I was worried. I was like, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to keep up? But actually, uh, the the charm of that whole thing was that the audience was with with me. They were entertained by how I had all these little items. And then the only other thing I'll share with you also is in my world, there's so much that I need to read, so much that I need to listen to or if I could watch, like a video. And a lot of times, being the visionary of Living Fall Out, I may not do it all, but I'm the founder, um, I have to kind of take in all this information, and it's hard. And so I've had to really rely on a lot of low vision devices. Um, most everything in my world talks, so my computer talks to me, and it reads out my emails, and it reads out things that I'm writing, or um, you know, every device. Gosh, my phone, my my scale. If I want to weigh myself in the morning, sure. you know, everything talks. And the reason why I mention that is because. I don't have the time in my day to fiddle around and have a pity party. And I also don't have the time in my day to to give up. Because when you're meant to do something in life, and this could be being a good mom or dad, this could be being a teacher, this could be being a host or being a manager of of employees. When you're meant to do something, if you don't show up, those other people miss out. So oh, when I yeah. wake up in the morning, the day may not go as planned, but I know that I need to show up to to give someone else that relief. Mm. You know, I um, I was doing an assembly maybe a couple of weeks ago, and and uh, and I was going through a you know just a real bad time where you know I'm thinking you know I was um, a few months back my my wife had a heart attack and it was one of those she's she's in her early 50s and you know she she walks and she eats right and everything else and and it was what you call a a widow maker or and um and it was really i remember my son calling me um on the phone and his voice was you know quivering a little bit and he said dad i just want you to know that you know they're taking mom um to the hospital in the ambulance and she's had a heart attack and um so I, I, I stopped the tour and I, and I went, I drove all the way to the hospital and, and we were sitting there to make a long story short and, and we figured out that I was, uh, been on the road for 18 years. And, uh, you know, since you've been in the music business, you know, we go through a lot of ups and downs just because of the industry itself, how it changes, how people listen to music, how they buy music. And, and it seems like I was just, you know, I was at my wits end about just quitting. And, and then I was thinking, you know what, this is, but this is what I'm called to do. I'm, I'm, I'm making an impact. I'm telling these kids my story. And I said, and I was telling, and I going back to the assembly, I was telling them, I said, you know what, when things get rough, either at home, when things get, you know, not going our way at school, when we're not making the grades we want, or things aren't going way our way, you know, um, music or in, um, in sports, it's the easiest thing for us to do, for anybody to do, is quit. Anybody can quit. And it was just, but you know, it's as, as an entrepreneur, as, as myself, you know, there is, it seems like the times are becoming frequent. 
of, of me thinking, gosh, I, I don't know how long or how much longer I can do this because, you know, being on the road for 18 years is, is a lot. And, uh, so that, you know, so we, I guess we all go through a lot of ups and downs with, um, with things that we love to do, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I honestly, what I would say about that is I think it's about remembering why you did it in the first place. And for you, that's why do you do music? You know, what was, the, you know, what is it about the, the environment, the camaraderie in the venue? You know, what is it, you know, what was that one song that really was the first one or the second or the third that you were the most oh, yeah. proud of or singing a cover of somebody who, you know, inspired you to want to get into music in the first place. And oh, I think for any of us, it's just always remembering, you know, why do we have the passions we have? You know, why did we create the families we created? Why do we have the friends we have? And, but, but, they're, but they're in that why is the answer. And you sometimes right. you just have to, you know, press the pause button on the remote of life and say, sure. pause, I'm going to pause <laughs> life and reflect. <laughs> You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, listen. I want. I want to focus. I, I, I meant to get in, into um, in the, with the bully. You know, in in your personal opinion, um, or what you know about bullying, do you feel? Do you personally feel that bullying is getting worse or getting better nationwide? You know, it's 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 a it's a good question because I think due to social media. And the need for people to keep up, you know, keeping up with the Joneses sure. or people that pretend that they're something they're not. I just think if people could be more real, more authentic, then it would be a much smoother ride. And, and that's even true back in the day when we were in high school, right? There's always that bully. Sure. And the people they pick on, right? Mm-hmm. But if we could only fo- follow that bully home, when they open their door... What environment do they live in? Like, they're strong outside in the world, but who are they behind closed doors? You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or the bully of the office. You know, they get in their car, they drive home, but is anybody waiting for them? Probably not. Or they go home and they bully other people. Mm -hmm. But honestly, at the end of our life, we have to be able to look back and be proud of who we are and what we did. And for those that are being bullied, though, I just want to say that they are my heroes, the people that get picked on, because, boy, are they resilient. Sure. Are they survivors? Because it would be so easy to say, I'm not going back to school. Right. I'm not going back to the office. I quit. Right. But when I see a lot of people that are getting bullied, they still show up. Right. They take it, and then they try to grow from it. Right. You know, um, in the last... Let me think. In the last eight or ten days, um, there's been two teenagers that have committed suicide, and um, um, where they say it was um, it was due to bullying. One suicide was uh, at a school where I did an assembly, which was about maybe 45 minutes from where I lived. And then uh, I had um, a friend uh, where I did a concert about three hours away said that there was another uh, where I did a concert. There was someone else that was. One person was 16, the other one person was 14, and they committed suicide. You know, West Virginia is ranked in the top 10, um, and I've said this over and over in regards to bullying. But my question to you, we have these kids that have committed suicide. I mean, how how do kids go so far uh, to take their own life? I mean, is it, I mean, and what I'm saying, is it because of being bullied or is it more of a mental illness? I mean, what do you think? I, I, I think it's honestly feeling like it's going to be a life sentence. If, if you feel like you're always going to be bullied in life, you're always going to be the underdog, you're never going to have enough money, you're constantly going to struggle, a lot of times people say, what kind of life is that? Sure. What did I do wrong? Right? right. But, but the thing is, is they have, what they, what they, we, we can't see in the moment when we're stuck, when we're sad, when we're hopeless, it's hard to see that light. It's hard to see if it's ever going to get better. And that loneliness, you know, feeling like, oh, gosh, if I disclose this to other people, they're going to judge me. Right. They're going to make fun of me. You know, I'm already, gonna, I'm already feeling low. They're gonna, now they're going to look down on me even further. 
it's that gray cloud that makes people want to check out. Right. But that's why it's really important for all of us to watch other people. It could be a stranger. It could be that cashier at the supermarket that checks you in and out every week when you buy your groceries. It could be a student. It could be a friend, a coworker. If somebody, like a, like a flower that kind of wilts over, you know, if, it's, if they feel like they're a wilted flower and you just see that their mood's a little bit different, mm-hmm. it's really important not to just do the surface. How are you doing today? Right? Chipper, right. chipper, right? Because right. what are you going to say back to that? If you're that wilted flower, you're not chipper. You're, you have no answer to that. But if you go up to them and, and say, you know what? I just want to give you a hug. I don't know if anybody has told you today how proud we are of you and how much you do here. I just want you to know that. Mm -hmm. And I really think that we have the ability to give a compliment to one person a day. I even challenge your audience, you know, shoot to the moon, right? Give as many compliments away as you can. Because that little gift, your hair looks nice today, or what a great blouse, or, you know, thank you so much for showing up on time. All those little things make people want to do more and keep going. You know, I... um I was just thinking back. I did an interview with a, um, oh gosh, she was a junior in high school. And um, she was bullied since she was, oh man, in elementary school and throughout middle school. And um, it was one of the situations where, you know, the administration, uh, the parent knew about it, of course. So there was some communi- communication between the, the daughter and the parents, which is a good thing. And, um, but. Um, the parent addressed it to the administration and then it got, it got better for a while. And then it, and it, and it sort of, you know, um, got started getting worse. And, um, and what she, what she did, and then there's a reason why I'm at, uh, telling you this, but, um, she started a program, uh, I forgot what it, it was called praying or something like that. And, uh, like B R I N G. And it was, uh, maybe four or five people, kids, Um, that put the support group together working with the counselor where they would meet like once a week and which I thought it was the the, a great idea and the reason why I'm saying this is this there's they they said that um, 80 85 percent of all bullying that takes place there's no intervention when I first heard that Nancy I was thinking okay obviously then the teachers aren't intervening or the administration's not intervening or the parent is but what's happening is that the kids aren't getting involved when when they see something and bullying happens I, I think they want to do something about it but then they're probably thinking okay what are the repercussions of this am I going to be rejected now or am I, or I'm, am I going to get bullied that all being said putting yourself in somebody's shoes that's getting bullied if it's 10 18 years old or gosh even 30 years old how would you deal with getting bullied i mean how would you resolve it well i actually really like the whole story that you just shared about that program and you know i guess i I, what i want to say about that that question is I, I, it's so such an awkward. Every many many of our decades of our life are awkward, right? Sure. You're, sometimes you're awkward when you're a little kid because, you know, maybe you're shy and you know maybe you just haven't found your rhythm yet. Right. You know, you're awkward as a teenager or even college because, you know, you, you might not be athletic enough or the pretty one or you know whatever. Um, and then you know even as you go along in 30s, 40s, and 50s in the working years. You know, there's a lot of competition there. And then even when you're older, right, there's competition there. So where I'm going with the whole thing is I love that you gave that example. And I think that it does have to happen with the students. They have to take the reins. But sometimes it's hard to figure out what does taking the reins look like. And if somebody has the ambition, the desire to start a program, then then that's fantastic. But what you might also want to look at for everybody listening is what local in-person programs are available or online, and they could be personal development, they could be image. You know, half of the time people are just trying to figure out what is my image? You know, am, am I supposed to look like another person? Do I need to have a certain 
clothing type to, to fit in. Sure. It's about exploring and finding out who you are. Or, you know, even sports, you know, it's about finding out what is that one or two things that you can do well. It might not be football. It might not be tennis, right? Yeah. But maybe, gosh, I'm really good at badminton or I'm really stellar at foosball. Even the silliest things, sure. you can say, I am good at it, right? So I think what we want to do is inspire our students Um, our children, but even adults, right? Because we're big kids, right? It's about inspiring us to find our lane. What can we be good at? You know, painting, technology, a foreign language, cooking, you name it. So it's no longer about being a carbon copy of someone else or keeping up with someone else. It's about finding an original within yourself. So what what you're saying... um Define define yourself. In, in other words, you're building confidence in, in within yourself. Yes. Is that right? And, yes, and, and, but you have to find yourself by trying things. You right. know, getting out there. Mm-hmm. And I think, yep. and I think that that is that is the biggest key. Um, even though it might be, um, you know, uh, not genuine, I think that it's so important that kids be confident. I, you know, it's I. I mean, I've talked to so many people, and and and. Kids can just pick up on just looking at somebody, and and if they're and if they see a, another student walking down with their head down, you know, just being really scared about everything, they're they're, they're prey. I mean, they're they're prone to get bullied. That's the way it is. But if they walk up high, I mean, with their face up or their chin up, with confidence and you know recognizing everybody, I you know that's I think that is probably uh, some good advice. I think yeah. finding your talent, your purpose. You know, and then because you're confident in that, you know, and then um, I don't know, I just uh, confidence. And, 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 and I also think humor has something to do with it. Yeah. And and I and, and I'll even share an example. Just yesterday I was on a plane and it was a, a very small charter plane. And um, I met this gal and we were talking and being legally blind, you know, I can't necessarily see the flight attendant. And I guess the, uh, you know, the, the announcer, the recording came on that talks about, you know, using the air mask <laughs> and all this. And I didn't realize, because I just couldn't see her, that the lady was standing there doing demonstrations along with the recording. So I turned to the gal next to me and I was talking to her and just kind of having a chatty conversation, but I didn't realize that was happening. And, and I, the reason why I share that story is thankfully the gal talking to me was able to pat her eyes and convey to the other person that I didn't see. Mm. I would have felt so bad if that other person had walked away all day thinking, well, that girl was rude. Now, the reason why that's important is because we all don't know what each other are dealing with. Right. Somebody's dealing with a broken heart. Somebody's dealing with social media pressure. Somebody has domestic violence in their home. And so the only way to pull back the onion, to really uh, go through the layers, is to ask and just you know, be of support for right. another person. Well, I want to do a couple of things. But first of all, I, I want you to... Um just take this time and just to talk and we have listeners that have been bullied um a lot of a lot of students what what advice can you tell them you know um just to get them through the remaining of the school year Mm, well the good news is the school year will end oh but then it's going to start again right right? Mm -hmm. and so I, i i have to be honest that that as it ends you know, it's, it's going to start again. But what I want everybody to do is I want you to do your best every day, meaning that everybody who is being bullied is going to be at different levels of survival. For some people, they, are, they can barely breathe. They hate school so much. Mm-hmm. For others, they're eating alone because they don't want to get picked on, or they go somewhere else because they don't want to even be around out in public. Um, and so just do the best you can and show up every day, get a good education, study hard because it's, it's not, you know, the saying is knowledge is power and it really is because when you study and you learn, your world gets bigger and bigger, bigger than the bully's world. Mm. And I really believe that an education can be one's ticket out of a negative situation. Wow, that's good. You know, and, and if you're not scholastically smart, 
then try to find some other avenue. You know, volunteer outside of school if you can. You know, something just to help make yourself stand out. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to take this summer and I want you to find things about yourself that you've never tried before. And, and tr have somebody do it with you that you trust. Could be a parent, could be a friend, could even be a teacher who, who are your friends with. And just say, you know what, I'd really like to take this summer to try a couple sports out. Or, you know, would you be willing to go shopping with me? I, I'd really like to try to find a, a new style for the new year. Or, you know, I'd like, I'd like to go back to the school year and have some jokes, and I'm the worst at it. Well, take on learning one joke a week, right? You're gonna go back super funny after two months of, of jokes. So I really believe sometimes, rem remember that remote control, right, of life where we hit that pause button? Sure. I really believe that students in the summertime, it's a, it's a time for them to hit the reset button, hit the pause button, whatever you want, and, and, and learn and grow. Hmm. And the last thing I want to give them in terms of advice is just be, be authentic and be true and you know if there's elements of who you are that somebody is picking on you about I want you to go online and find somebody who who is a positive representative of that and what I'm gonna what I mean by that is let's say somebody has a scar let's say somebody has you know um, burn scars or a disability a lot of times if you go online you will find other people who have that same scar, who have that same disability. And it's inspiring to see someone like ourselves out there doing a great, you know, amazing thing. Sure. When I when I learn about other blind people who, I mean, gosh, some people climb mountains and they do all sorts of things, right? <laughs> that that says to me, wow, you know, I, then I can do more. Right. And so that would be my advice for the students. Wow, that's awesome. Well, you know, I want to go ahead and wrap up, but one of the things that I do before I uh, wrap up a, a show is I ask the, um, the person that I'm interviewing what I call super questions. Now, I know this is, uh, I, I didn't tell you about this, but just do the best you can. I, I'm going to ask you a question. You can just give me a short answer, okay? Okay. Okay, so what's one word that best describes you? Courage. Boy, that's the truth. Um, what is one of the, your biggest pet peeves? This could be within the business, uh, within your business, or it could be family. It could be anything. But what is your one of your biggest pet peeves? Whiners. <laughs> People who whine. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, next question. What natural gift would you most like to possess? Natural gift. I think if I had a little bit more physical ability, like I don't love to run, but I admire people that do, right? right. Or but some people are so physically talented. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, next question. Who is your favorite band of all time? Favorite band? Um, I would actually say that Lionel Richie is my favorite singer with the Commodores, but, but even on his own. In fact, I named my service dog Lionel Richie. Oh and then I would also say that, <laughs> that Whit, I'd also say Whitney Houston, rest in peace. But she got me through a lot of hard times when I was younger, through my parents' divorce, through a lot of the bullying that I went through. Right. A lot of the Whitney songs were, were what got me through. You know, Nancy, I tell you what, I, I uh, go to sleep listening to Lionel Richie <laughs> and oh. uh, and then Whitney Houston, of course. And then I, I we were just in Vegas. Uh, the family was in Vegas um, a couple weeks ago and um, Celine Dion was there. Of course, you know, it was one of those situations where we couldn't afford the $150 a ticket. But um, but anyway, she's one of another of my favorites. But um, and last question. Um, tell me something true that almost nobody agrees with you on. Something that is true that no one agrees with me on. Um, you know, sometimes, believe it or not, sometimes I can be shy or sometimes I can be uncertain. And that's a lot of times due to my vision, uh, not being able to see. Um, and so I have to kind of take it in with my, my, what I hear, what I smell, 
maybe what I taste. Right. And, uh, and then, then I get more confident. But then a lot of people look at me and say, well, she hosts her own show. She leads her own company. And, you know, I'm confident once I'm, once I'm secure, sure. if that makes sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. You know, if you don't mind, can you tell us one more time on how people can connect with you? I know that I, I mean, I was on your website several times and I know I, what I loved about yours is that it, it, that website can take you anywhere you want to go, you know, from YouTube to your radio show and, and everything else. But again, go ahead and tell everybody how to get in touch with you or get connected with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they can go to livingfulloutcom and you're right. That's kind of the hub of everything. Um, but one of the things that, that I learned a long time ago, and again, being visually impaired, this all goes into play, is we try to meet people where they are. So like I, being visually impaired, I am a more auditorial learner. I li- that's why I love music or I like videos. I listen to them. I can't see them, but I listen to them. Sure. Well, other people need to read and take information in. So when you go to our website, we do have blog posts that, that educate you and motivate you and then there's videos that that will inspire and we really try to give tangible life coaching tips in the videos as well mm. of course you can go to all the social medias um, Instagram Facebook Twitter uh, YouTube Pinterest um, and one of the things we take our, a lot of pride in is we very rarely ever talk about ourselves we're storytellers so we try to tell stories of resilience And the biggest thing is if somebody in your audience has a compelling story or knows somebody that does, we would love to hear from them. We'd love to tell their story, whether we have them on the radio show or maybe we tell their story via social media. So they can reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com and uh, share their story. Or they can call us at 310-909-7800. Awesome.